Aren't you thankful to be alive? <laughs> aren't, you, aren't you thankful? What are you thankful? Who's thankful for? Some, just shout out what you're thankful for. Go ahead, Merritt. What are you thankful for? You're thankful for your family. Come on. We've got another family. What about Gwendolyn? What are you thankful for, sister? Life. Come on. Think we'll be alive. What else? You're thankful for Jesus. That's good. Come on. Daniel, what are you thankful for? Salvation. Salvation. Good, good, good. Awesome. I thought you were going to say you're thankful for that hot rod you got out there. <laughs> what do you got out there? What is that? What, what do you drive? Uh, Dodge Challenger SR392. A Dodge Challenger SR392. And, it, and that, that, it, that thing sounds like a, it sounds like something not heavenly. <laughs> Just sounds like, Wah! But it is. It's sanctified. Awesome. Anyone else thankful for something? There? Hey, Grant. I am thankful I get to be a kid again. You're thankful you get to be a kid again. <laughs> Only way into the kingdom, right? Like a child. Come on. So good. Yeah. Worship. Richard. Worship. You're thankful for worship. Come on. Me too. I am thankful for worship. Yeah, back here. Okay, for family, and what was the first thing? Your new cat? What is it? Cat. That's awesome. And, and what's your name? Anthony. Awesome. Have we met yet? We, we meet. Nice to meet you, Anthony. Let's welcome Anthony to SRC. Come on. Anthony's got a new cat, everybody. Hey, Mom. Yeah. We are priceless and valuable to God, and he's got a good plan. Man, you're optimistic. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what's your name? Cindy. Cindy. And we haven't met, have we? No. Everyone. Well, let's welcome Cindy. Awesome. And that's Grandma. And is this Mom? And what's Mom's name? Danielle. But we have met. I, I knew that. Good to see you, Danielle. Let's welcome Danielle as well. Awesome. Now let's go around the room, and each person will share. I'm just kidding. No, um. <laughs> You're like, okay, it was cool for a little, it was cute for a little, I'm out, I can't, I can't take it anymore. Um, hey, listen, uh, God loves you so much, and, um, and uh, in the first service I gave this word, I'm going to give it again, um, because if it, if it works, you might as well just do it again. Anyways, I felt like there was an anointing for healing uh, in the area of uh, shoulder pain, um, yeah, and even stiffness in the neck, and, uh, and even, uh, it may even be associated with migraines. So if that's you, would you just wave at me? You got real tense, tense, awesome, awesome, awesome. Look at all the hands. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise the Lord. You say, why is that awesome? Because Jesus is going to touch you. Yeah, Darren's not. I don't touch people. They've got, got the pandemic. So anyways, if you need healing, would you just stand up to your feet real quick? Jesus is going to touch you. And some people around you uh, will lay hands on you. Unless you got the red brace, bracelet, then we'll, hey, hey, stay six feet away. Um, so yeah, body of, body of Christ, if you just come around these ministers and, and just, be, just begin to just, just command healing. Just be sensitive to what the Spirit of, is doing. This is what we call body ministry. And, and, and Lord, we just thank you that you reveal so you can heal. And, and you, you spoke to me this morning and said you wanted to heal people with shoulder pain, neck pain, and even migraines. So Holy Spirit, we just honor your presence. Church, just begin to, just, just begin to pray for them, even if you're not uh, uh, touching them. Let's just come into a place of agreement right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, right now, we welcome you, Lord. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your healing touch. For your healing touch. For your healing touch. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More. All right, Father, in Jesus' name, we loose your healing touch into each and every individual standing. Everything that is ungodly and is not of you, anything that's related to stress, anything that is, um, that is on assignment, anything that is on a demonic assignment, we cancel that assignment right now, and we plead the blood of Jesus right now. We thank you, Lord, that your blood, it breaks every curse. Yeah, yeah, all worry, all anxiety, Yep, yep, yep. Broken right now in Jesus' name. Broken right now in Jesus' name. 
Yep, broken right now, not tomorrow, not next year, not in 2025. Yep, right now, 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 in Jesus' name. Now, right now, in Jesus' name. Yep, 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 yep. All migraines and torment. I, I, I speak to the tormentor. I command you to go and be loose right now. You come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we have life and life abundantly. So I just declare life right now. And even he, he, people that have headaches in this meeting. Lord, we thank you for your healing touch loose right now. And now I declare the peace of God that surpasseth all understanding. You have to be loose right now in Jesus' name. Peace and rest. Just receive it. Just re receive the shalom of heaven. Hey. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Let's shout to Jesus this morning. He's good. No, come on. Let's really shout to the Lord this morning. He's good and his steadfast love endures forever. Thanks, Dwayne. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, if you're new to the church, each Sunday we read our Bibles. That's a good thing to do at church. Read your Bible, right? And so we're going through the book of 1 Corinthians. Today we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So if you've got your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, what we're doing is we're doing an expository study of 1 Corinthians. Here's what that means. That means that we go through at least three verses at a time. Because that's how you get the context of a passage. And <laughs> what we want to do is we want to allow God's word to speak to us without any sort of filters. That's expository preaching. Lord, let your truth come and bring change inside of us. Okay? What, what we, the opposite of expository teaching is when we, don't expo, when we don't expose something, but we impose something. Okay? When, when, when you can allow the scriptures to read you, you will be changed. But when you impose... Your stuff upon the word of God, what you will do is you will in turn attempt to change the scriptures. How do you know that a little bit of that is taking place right now in 2020? You have people that are taking Sharpies to their Bibles. You have people that are tearing out parts of their Bibles. And what they're doing is they're taking their own internal issues, and they're imposing them on the Bible, saying certainly something that was written 2,000 years ago can't have any sort of truth to us today. How many know that you know truth, the kind of truth that will set you free, because it's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yeah, and here's the other thing. Jesus said that you would know the truth and the truth would set you free. So that when you impose your relative truth upon the word of God, there's no freedom in that. There's just temporary affirmation. Okay? And, and how many of you, you don't, you don't want somebody, <laughs> you don't want somebody to just come alongside of you and just make you feel good for a little bit, right? Yeah. Just, just, Pastor Dan, just say something that just makes me feel good for five minutes because my life is a bummer. No, you don't need that. You already have that. It's called YouTube. You can YouTube a positive message. Get some birds flying. Get some woo-woo music playing. You are special. Listen, I'm not going to do that. You don't need that. Okay, you don't need temporary elation. You need truth that brings transformation. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyways, this has already been good. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to dive into the Bible. We're going to study some stuff. We're going to let it study us. And then we're going to transition. We're going to give of our tithes and our offerings. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna launch our Red Envelope project today. Mm -hmm. Yep. If you're new here, um, each Christmas season, we do a Red Envelope project every Sunday for like a month where we give, a, for us, it's a tremendous amount of money to help out the poor and the needy. Uh, and a bunch of nations. So today we're launching our, our GOAT project, which is where if you're, we help out these widows in Uganda uh, that don't have a job, like an income stream. When you give a GOAT to a widow, it provides a widow an income stream so that they can start making money. In fact, there's even a village in Uganda where every widow in that village 
has an income stream because of SRC. One person thinks that's cool. Okay, I was like, yay. We're going to need to really pray. Anyways, you guys are legit. This is going to be good. Father, thank you for, um, thank you that this really is the day that you have made. And with sincerity, we, we rejoice and we are glad in it. And Lord, we just thank you so much for all these things that we said we were thankful for. For life and family and Jesus and salvation. The fact that we get to be children. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that as we dive into your word, that your word would come and study us. Lord, as we dive into your word, that revelation would leap off the pages. And that this revelation would bring transformation. Father, we just thank you so much for what you're doing at Seattle Revival Center. We thank you that hope is alive. And for those that are here today that have hope deferred, that's made the heart sick, we thank you that today they're going to receive a fresh gift of hope. Lord, for those that have been wrestling with torment, they're going to leave here radically, unquestionably free. Lord, we thank you that the gospel isn't just informational. It's incarnational and it resonates even in the atmosphere. And even as we're studying your word, our spirit man's just going to start saying, wow, 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 wow. Yes, feed me. I need life. And we thank you and stuff. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that, that each and every person that leaves here today, Lord, that we would leave here no longer slaves, but a revelation that we are sons, sons, sons of an inheritance. And thank you, Lord that Brenda Lynch is here today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Oh, yeah, I saw you, girl. I saw you back there trying to hide, but you can't hide from me. All right, everybody there? First Corinthians chapter 6? Okay, good. Now, if you were here last week, awesome. Bless you. I wasn't. I actually preached on the screen. And I did that on purpose because it was a very tense subject, and I didn't... I, I wasn't a strong enough leader to preach it in person, so I just made a movie, and I got the heck out of here. So last Sunday, we looked at the entire fifth chapter of 1 Corinthians. Is he serious? I can't ever tell. 1 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 5 last week was all about uh, sexual compromise and the acceptance of sexual sin in the church. Thank God that was last week. <laughs> all right. Um, now, this is weird. Okay, and the reason why it's weird is because Paul goes from talking about sexual compromise in the church to lawsuits in the church, okay? And so that's, that's kind of strange. It's kind of weird to pivot from, I hear that there's sexual sin among you. And not just sexual sin, but like the kind of sexual sin that even the pagans don't engage with. Yeah, that's pretty freaky. So he's like, we got to deal with this because we've got to talk about this because you guys are not dealing with this. You guys are tolerating this, okay? And Paul's like, you cannot tolerate compromise because compromise is like leaven. A little bit of compromise affects and infects the entire body. Okay, and then he continues. First Corinthians chapter 6. When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try these trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more, then, matters pertaining to this life? So if you have such cases... Why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle a dispute between brothers? But brother goes to law against brother. And that before unbelievers, to have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. This is what he's saying. When you guys are like suing each other all the time, you're already defeated. Why not rather suffer wrong? Why not rather be defrauded? But you yourselves wrong and defraud even your own brothers. This is what he's saying. He's saying, why is it every time I turn on court TV, I recognize the people on the show? Every time I turn on Judge Judy, there's Brother Smith and Sister Carla. Why is it you guys got a reputation 
You're always suing each other. He says, are you guys not competent enough to handle? Now listen, guys, we're not just talking about, you know, my neighbor, <laughs> my neighbor John is always driving his truck on my lawn. And now my lawn is destroyed. And I paid, you know, $20,000 so Simply Green could get my lawn going. And now my neighbor who also just so happens to come to my church. And no, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about fraud. We're talking about financial deception in the church to the degree that people are having to take other people in the church to court to get the, we're talking about ponzi schemes in the church yeah thank god that would never happen today i know some stories no joke we'll save that for a newcomer's luncheon but we have fun at those lunches we get into all kinds of fun questions and stuff but this, this is what this is what Paul is saying you guys got you guys got all this all this stuff going and, and you're doing it in front of unbelievers and then he continues he goes verse 9 or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God do not be deceived neither the sexually immoral nor idolaters nor idolaters nor men who practice homosexuality nor thieves nor the greedy nor drunkards nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the Spirit of our God. So here we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Last week, we're talking about sexual, sexual sin. He pivots and starts talking about um, Christians being so happy, always taking each other to court. Okay, but then he goes back to, at the end of this text, he goes back into the whole thing of, like, sexually immoral, idolatry. Well, aren't idolaters already sexually immoral? Like, he's got to just go deeper. He's got to get more and more specific. Nor idolaters. Well, yeah, if you're cheating on your wife, shouldn't that, gosh, Paul, can't you just say that, why do you got to keep breaking things down? You know, and then, and neither shall homosexuals. Well, gosh, that seems, that seems pretty... And intolerant like I was why could it you know and he just keeps breaking it down and neither shall greedy you know greed just makes you stupid it does have you ever known a greedy person enough is never enough they're just like ah! like greedy people never goes well for them um just saying different sermon nor drunkards right people that are, you know that 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 that, that they're they've just given themselves just to, to drunkenness or nor revilers nor swindlers i'm a swindler um that's my definition will inherit you know the the kingdom of god now we know that the kingdom of god is not meat or drink but it's what righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So if you're involved in any of these things, you're not going to have a revelation of your righteousness. You're just not. You're going to be looking for religious affirmation, but inside you're not going to feel the Spirit of God testifying of your sonship. You're not going to be bold to share your faith. Why? Because the righteous are as bold as a lion, right? But for those that are in compromise, they're afraid of, they're afraid of their own shadow. Yeah, and so Paul is talking here, and when I was looking, I was like, okay, this is so interesting. Sexual sin, lawsuits, then we go back to sexual sin. It's a weird sandwich. So what's the point? What's the issue? Now, in a lot of churches, the way that this would be taught is, okay, so if you want to go to heaven, don't sow your neighbor. Now, if they're an unbeliever, sue away. Doesn't say nothing about that. Okay, if you want to go to heaven, don't be a drunkard, okay? If you want to go to heaven, you know, don't be a gay. We, what we do is we come up with, with these sermons. If you want to go to heaven, then you do this. You do that. The problem is, that's not the gospel. My job... This morning, and it is a job, I get paid for this. Lucky me. Um, my job is not to get up here every single Sunday and say, you know, <laughs> don't get drunk, don't be gay, recycle, vote Republican, don't have an affair with your stepmom. That's just gross. Like, like, and it's in the Bible. That just didn't come to me. And come on. That was last week. 
My job is not to stand up here and say, don't, don't, don't. Stop it, stop it, stop it. What's wrong with you? No, no, no. My job is to get up here every single Sunday and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Screwed up, perverted, addicted to this, addicted to that. Ooh, that one's real bad. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. What do homosexuals need? Jesus. What do straight men need? Oh, God, straight men need Jesus. <laughs> I am one. I need Jesus, okay? Our role, all of our role, this isn't just my deal. This is your deal. Don't point your finger at me and say, your job is to, no, no, no. Our role as the body of Christ is to <laughs> reveal Jesus. Reveal Jesus. Reveal Jesus. So then why is Paul talking about this? Because he's talking to believers who have forgotten about Jesus. He's talking to believers. You know, remember how this whole thing started, Acts chapter 2? Remember, remember Acts chapter 2? The fire comes down, the upper room. Remember that? They all start, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da they all start speaking in tongues, and they all go out, they preach the gospel. A thousand people get saved, and then all of a sudden the church is so romantic. They're gathering each other's homes. They're breaking bread. They're confessing sin, shit, and the church is growing. That's great. And then we get to Corinth, and they're not selling their Nintendo to pay for somebody else's bills what are they doing they're suing each other now this is the point what's the problem here if Darren if you're not saying that the sin is the problem um, then what's what's the problem how many know that, that 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 the sin is the obvious thing and so many times in the church we try to go for the obvious thing what we do is we end up clipping leaves off of a weed or we end up clipping a stem off of a, a weed but meanwhile there's all these roots in the soil how many of you got some stuff in your life and you've had religion come and take little clippings off of you? Clip, 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 clip. But meanwhile, you still know what's in you. You're like, praise the Lord. I hope this thing doesn't manifest. Anger, rebellion, hatred. Jealousy, envy, greed. I want more. I won't be happy till I have their car. Or better, ah, praise the Lord. <laughs> I got a prophetic word, right? This is what Paul says. What's the problem? What's the pro and I'm just having way too much fun. Not sorry. This is what he says. Do you not know that it's the saints, the righteous, the elect, believers, who will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, wait, who's he talking to? He's, talk, he's talking to you. He's talking to you. If the world's going to be judged by you, how is it that you're incompetent to try these trivial cases? Don't you know the day will come when you judge angels? How much more than pertaining to this life? So if you have such cases, why do you Lay them before people that have no revelation of the kingdom or eternity. This is what Paul's saying. Here's, here's the real issue. Injustice in the church. And the church has advocated her responsibility to be righteous judges on the earth. And when we advocate our responsibility to be righteous judges on the earth, what do we do? We take that responsibility and we put it on the natural judges in the earth. We take the problems and we put it on someone else. We take these problems and we say, obviously, all of this injustice exists, obviously, because of Joe Biden. <laughs> obviously, Seattle is so screwed up because of Governor Inslee. What we do is, because why? How can you do that? When I get to blame you, I don't have to take any responsibility. Yeah, and when I can say, that this is your fault. Now, I am a victim of the decision that you made, but this is the problem. Paul says, there's a lot of issues in your church, and how is it that you think you are going to step into the culture and bring justice when there is injustice in your own marriage? 
When there is injustice in your own sexuality, he says when there is injustice in your own finances, and the only way you know how to resolve this is to go to secular courts. You have taken a righteous responsibility and you've put it on an unrighteous court system. And you're doing it in front of unbelievers. This is what the Lord is doing. He's waking us up. I don't know if you've heard this. If, I don't care if you're listening to Charlie Shamp or if you're listening to Bobby Connor, if you're listening to Bonnie Shabda or just this last week, um, Todd White. The prophets are all saying the same exact thing. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. What are they talking about? We're talking about the church needs to wake up from her slumber and see that we cannot ignore injustice. We've got to begin to value the judgment of God. Which I know made some of you trigger. Do you say judge? Ow, oh, I didn't think he was one of those guys. I, oh, judging a guy. I, oh no, he's one of, oh, he's one of those judges. Because a lot of times for, for us that have been raised in the church, you hear the judgment of God immediately. You think of, of the fat dude on Facebook saying, no more L.A. <laughs> God's going to judge L.A. Why? Because everybody knows that L.A. is the only place in America where there's sin. And if God could just destroy L.A., America would be Okay. No, that is not the judgment of God. What we do is we equate judgment to punishment. Judgment is justice. A good judge executes his judgments, therefore bringing justice. All right. Oh, thank you. Thanks for, the, thanks for the encouragement. I get discouraged sometimes. Hey. Okay. Now, if you're watching online, this is going to be very frustrating, okay? Because um, you're not going to hear me for a bit. But I'm going to be talking into a microphone that's not working. Depending on something, but something that is not functioning. When you have injustice in your life, the natural operation of how things should work don't work. It's not okay to say that this is okay. Why? Microphones are not made to look cute. Microphones are created to amplify the person that is speaking. So if I continue to use this mic that's not even on, that is an illustration of injustice. Yeah. Yeah. Mic on. Yeah. Now, if you're watching online, what I just said is microphones are created to amplify. If I'm using a microphone and it's not working, that's a demonstration of injustice. Therefore, executing the justice of God means that the microphone gets to function the way that God created it to function. So that's why we say, it's just who I am. No, it's not. I get angry. It's just what I do. No. I'm a pervert. It's just what I... No. I'm gay. No, you're not. I'm just a religious... Fair. No, nobody ever says that. Nobody, nobody ever thinks, thinks that they are. Um, <laughs> I'm just a microphone that doesn't work. No, no. You've got an on switch. It's time to wake up. It's time to turn it on. I'll just, always, I'll just always have this pain. I'll just always have this disease. So God just died for everybody but not you. I'll always be tormented by my past. I did so many screwed up things. So Jesus took on everybody's sin but not yours. And this is what Paul says. You are a righteous judge on the earth 
but you've been tricked into thinking you're just a mic that doesn't turn on. And what is Jesus doing this year in 2020? He's saying, I created you to be on, to amplify the good news of the gospel, that he who knew no sin became all of your sin, all of your shame, all of your past, all of your sickness and disease. He became it. We don't point people to moralism. We point people to Jesus, that Jesus has done it. On the cross, he said, it is finished. Therefore, stop striving. No more striving. None of that. Now, you know what I see right now? I see injustice. I see a need for the church. You know what I hear right now? I hear groaning. I hear travailing. I hear all creation waiting. Not silently. If you have ears to hear, there's nothing silent right now. That even in this stillness, there is a screeching, there is a groaning, there is a travailing, a waiting for the sons of God to be awakened to their identity, into their destiny, into the realization that you were created for such a time as this. I was in the car um, this last week with, with my children. And uh, I asked them, do you guys know John 3, 17? Because we all know John 3, 16. But you, do you know John 3, 17? In John 3, 17, it says, For he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. So, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, to shame the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. And that even now, for God so loved the world that he is now raising up and releasing his manifested sons and daughters on the earth to reveal Jesus the Christ, so that whosoever would believe in Jesus the Christ would not perish with that all, 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 ah, 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 who believe in him would not perish, who would have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to shame the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. This is the nature of the power of the gospel, is to step in like a superman, is to step in like a superwoman, that when you see injustice, you respond. You say, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. We've got a responsibility. The mic has been off. People have been shut down. People have been silenced. Guys, there is injustice. What are you going to do about it? What's up, guys? Good. Good to see you. I was just about out of material, so thank God you're here. Thank God you're here. Guys, just play until Holy Spirit comes and and then I'll sneak off the stage. <laughs> On election day, we were with our staff. I told our team, today the stuff might hit the fan, so Steve, gas up the van. The church has a 15-passenger white van. And all the businesses were boarding up their, their stores on election day, right? We thought there was going to be riots, and we thought there was going to be all this kind of stuff because them Trump supporters. <laughs> so anyways, they, um, they're, everybody's boarding up all these doors and everything, and, um, uh, and we, the stuff might hit the fan. And so Steve, gas up the van. <laughs> and there wasn't riots, and there wasn't stuff, and we didn't have to go into the point. The point is this. We're thinking differently. That when there's chaos, who are you going to call? Christians. Sons and daughters of righteousness. A people that are being governed by the kingdom of God. This is what he says. 
drunkards, revilers, swindlers, greedy people, sexually immoral, idolaters, idolaters, homosexuals, do not have the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. But you are not of that breed any longer. Some of you, he said, were very familiar with such a life. He says, but now you've been washed, but now you've been sanctified. Now you've been justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, dearly beloved. It, isn't it time that we can begin to judge our own selves to bring the justice of God into our own bodies into our own mind our will and our emotions body of Christ isn't it time that we can bring the justice of God into our own homes isn't it time that we can bring the justice of God into our own neighborhoods into our own cities body of Christ how can we judge angels if we can't even judge our own conscience and this is what he says body of Christ it is it's time to say yes to your responsibility that you would be an executor of justice and righteousness on the earth that we would stop blaming the government and we would stop blaming this that and the other but we would say we are a hope generation we are a people with solutions we are connected to the vine and even when people are freaking out we would say when the stuff hits the fan Steve gas up the van we're going in we're going look at the person next to you say we're going in we're going in we're going in listen we're told we are being told that a hundred thousand people could lose their jobs by Christmas time in Washington State alone what does that mean it means that Phil and Lucia Pearson stand up to your feet it means that they need your your food um, donations because we've got a food bank that we just opened because we are feeding the hungry we're gonna be feeding a lot more hungry people if you can volunteer if you've got a desire to heat feed I don't know if you guys have seen what they're calling the poverty lines in Texas right now massive traffic jams from people that need something just like like food that's happening in the United States of America when the stuff hits the fan it's time for the church to gas up the van the Lord spoke to me at the beginning of 2020 and said this is a year of opportunity 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 where do you find the opportunity you find it in the crisis you find it in the chaos you find it in the injustice why because wherever you have injustice you just have a judge that hasn't shown up yet Where are my judges at this morning? Where are my judges at this morning? Judges that care, judges that are carrying something in their heart, judges with honor, judges with standards, judges with principles, judges that are willing to stand for some, judges that are willing to bleed for some, judges that are willing to get in there and fight for some. You know, I've been fighting for some, th I don't know if you, but I've been. And somebody said, don't forget love, brother. And that, that got me even more passionate. Why? Because what, what does love look like? Love doesn't look like passivity. Love doesn't look like complacency. Love doesn't look like, but I'm just not going to say anything. That is not love. That is not love. That is passivity. That is complacency. That is a picture of a sleeping church. I'm just going to sleep and call it, I'm just going to, no, wake stinking up. It is time to be awakened to your identity. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them online. To your identity and destiny. And Jesus, this is what Paul says. I'm not saying this to shame you, but I am asking you, are you self-aware at all? <laughs> I'm not saying this to shame you, but are you are you checking your pulse? What is God, here's a question, what's he doing in you? What's, what's arising in you? Where's your passion at? Do you have a revelation of how your life brings about kingdom realities on the earth? If you don't, that's okay, but it should bother you. It should bother you. If you don't know how your life contributes to kingdom flourishing on the earth, that's okay, but it should bother you enough to say, God, you stinking created me for a reason. Now is about time that you tell me why. Because I know you didn't just create me just to be another brick in the wall, another cog in the machine. Here we go around again. Uh, Pastor, you did, I just tithe and hang out until I die? Welcome to church. 
There is more. There is more. There is more. No, no, no. Listen. Let your spirit listen. There is more. There is more. You've been lied to. This, there's so much more to church. There's so much more to revelation. There's so much more to the prophetic. There's so much more to encounters. There's so much more to going to heaven. There's so much more to the revelation that you're seeing with Jesus in heaven. Places. So much more that this room is filled with angels. So much more that the great cloud of witnesses is peering into this room. Cheering us on. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's, you might not be excited, but there is more. There is more. There there is more. There is more. I want more so that I can give more. I want more so I can release more. I want more so I can represent more. Shake yourself. Shake yourself. Wake yourself. Arouse yourself. There is more. There is more. There is more. Uh, one of these days, somebody's going to do something. One of these days, somebody's going to say something. One of these days, somebody's going to say, why is that giant mocking and defying the people of God? One of these days, somebody's going to be willing to fight for something. One of these days, somebody's going to be willing to go to jail. One of these days, somebody's going to be willing to stand up for truth. One of these days, people are going to say, why not me? <laughs> Russell Wilson asked that question, took him to the Super Bowl. It's time for a champion mentality to return to the church. It's time for a champion disposition. Because we just, uh, whatever. Just, uh, no, no. It's time to get aroused. It's time to get awakened. It's time to, to see that there's a harvest of harvesters. The Lord sp spoke to Bobby Connor. He told Bobby, there is an awakening of reapers. He's awakening the reapers. He's awakening the reapers, see our Bible center, have ears to hear, have ears to hear, have ears to hear. He is awakening the reapers. He is sending the angels that gather. He is, he is, he is re, restoring um, our, our revelation of who we are in him and his desire that none would perish. There is no excuse for a son and daughter in the kingdom of God to be perishing. There is no excuse. Just declare this with me. I will settle for nothing less than God's very best. Steve, are you keeping up with me? Good, because I got the pace anointing. Just declare right now, I will settle for nothing less than God's very best. God's very best. Just say, just, just look at that area of lack and say that's not God's best. Look at that area of shame in your life and just say, that's not God's best. Look at that area of pain in your past and say, that's not God's best for me. That's not God's best for me. That's not God's best. I will settle for nothing less than God's very best. Calm down. Um, worship team getting all fired up. Stomping on stuff. We're gonna do, I'm going to pray for you, and then we're just going to go crazy with these guys. We're going to sing right dance. Now, next Sunday, next Sunday night at 6 o'clock, Elizabeth Cooper is going to be here. We're going to go after it. There's no plan. There's no, like, we're just going to go after prophetic praise, proclamation, declaration, and intercession. And we're not going to come looking to be entertained by a musician. We're going to come as righteous judges who don't worship on the earth. We are going to ascend. We're going to worship with Jesus in heavenly places. We're going to worship its kings and priests standing in the gap as an ecclesia. So that'll be next. She'll be here on Sunday morning, but we're not going to do any of that then. So come back Sunday night <laughs> at 6 p.m. and we'll, we'll go above 30,000 feet. Is that good? Now, don't forget, the, don't forget about the goats. Ah! Red envelope. Thank you for that scary prop. And I'm going to close in prayer. God bless you as you give. They'll put the stuff up. Good. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. And we pray this prayer. Let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our trespassers. And lead us not into evil, but deliver us from evil. I messed that one up. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.